worship. Good morning, these Lutherans. Good morning. Uh, happy Pentecost to you. Uh, today is the day of Pentecost where we end our Easter season and we'll be transitioning into our season after Pentecost. Uh, our liturgy is transitioning early because of our wrap up of Easter season last week where we celebrated with our special music by Mark Pearson. It's also the day I get to wear my favorite stole, so uh, I always love when I get to bring the red out. So with that being said, let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our life, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the Spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit 
one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Listen, listen now as we read about Ezekiel's vision. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, where there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very, very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophes Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus the Lord God Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath into you, and you shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the breath, prophecy mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Before prophecy, therefore prophecy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Lord, and when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Words of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. And so you renew the face of the earth. 
glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus said, when the Advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrows filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. And about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. So Pentecost today, of course, is uh, where we celebrate the arrival of God's promised Holy Spirit. In our Gospel lesson, uh, we see this long dialogue, a portion of it, where Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And the arrival of God's Holy Spirit, we see in John that this arrival, the Holy Spirit comforts us, it helps us, it advocates for us. And this is kind of a personal interaction that we see in the Acts, we see how the Holy Spirit empowers us for ministry. And this is a more corporate, and this uh, points to the church as we see these believers, uh, uh, Jewish believers, uh, proselytes, who have come to Jerusalem to worship, and they are empowered for ministry. And then we see that there is more of a, a universal cosmic application of the Holy Spirit in our Ezekiel passage where God brings the things that are dead to life, right? So we see that the Holy Spirit is integral, that reason that word, uh, to our ministry, to our personal faith, but also to the salvation of all of creation. Now, I was looking at these passages, I was uh, reminding that we've been going through several different themes. Of course, there's always the shepherd theme when I'm preaching. I'll always talk about shepherds. That, that's a common one in the Bible. I don't just pull it out, you know, because I can, but it's there. There's also the agrarian. We've talked a lot about the agrarian uh, uh, metaphors and pictures that we are given in Scripture of, uh, you know, I've been talking about the branches that they have all over and cleaning that up and pruning, remember, we had to talk about that and the pruning of the branches and such, but there's also uh, one of the um, uh, pictures that we are given is of the body, and we are also given pictures within uh, of the Holy Spirit, of um, symbols of fire and um, this action that is throughout Scripture of God coming in fire, we think of Abraham encountering God and fire walking through the uh, uh, pieces of the animal who had been split. We think of Moses in the fire and the, up on, on Mount Sinai. We think of the fire in the sacrificial uh, practices of where they go to Jerusalem and worship and they sacrifice an animal and it is consumed with fire. But the, here we get the picture that God also often use and it's universal to us as people is a picture also of the body. We get a lot of a lot of comments on the human body or, or the Lord's body. We see that the hand of the Lord is involved. We see that there's breath, there's bones, there's flesh, there's skin, there's tongues, and there's sinews. 
And I'm not even sure what a sinew is. I think it might be like veins and stuff or ligaments. I mean, no, no, it tears. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but then it, 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 it's biological, right? I don't even have to pay attention to um, the anatomy and physiology because I have hair, right? That's a perfect example, right? <laughs> and so when you think of when I go to the doctor, I always have an advocate. Right? I always have an advocate in Tara, right? She tells me what's wrong. In fact, when my thyroid was uh, messed up, I went to the doctor, and my doctor didn't run the proper tests and such, and I was still sick with this crazy thyroid situation. I come home, I'm passing out, and I'm falling on the ground at Costco and all that stuff. And Tara's finally like, you know, I think your thyroid might be messed up. You should go back and have that looked at. And sure enough, we did the test, and it was my thyroid. Now, Cynthia's trying to schedule her um, shoulder surgery, and you know she had that schedule, now she has to put it up, and she's working with the insurance and all that, and she was telling us this morning on the way here, she was on the phone, she was going to call me and tell me about this, and she said that I was on the phone and I was talking to the AI thing, and it asked me if I actually wanted a person, an advocate, to deal with it, right? <laughs> And that's what you need it, it is in, in medical stuff. You need an advocate. I didn't know anything about my, what a thyroid was or what a thyroid did until I saw the ill effects of it. Um, often we don't understand uh, an aspect of a disease or our body until we experience us talking with Al, you know, about Parkinson's. And that's just that I know a fair amount about Parkinson's because I know a few people, a few people here. Uh, Al and Bill who have suffered with Parkinson's, and we see the old effect on my mentor, Dr. Jeff. He is pretty far along in Parkinson's, and so having walked with them, uh, having experienced uh, their struggles and the various things that happen, I've learned a lot about Parkinson's. But what we see is that when we're dealing with a medical situation, this is where I can get really rattled, right? It's in a medical situation is that we're unsure and we don't know what might happen. We have these body parts that we sort of know what they are and sort of know how they work, but until they break down, until somebody we know or ourselves that we love uh, starts to break down, um, we just don't, we just take them for granted, right? But then we learn of how important it is, right? And, but an advocate is what uh, we are told that Jesus tells us that we are given, right? You think of when you go to the doctor, if you have a surgery, now they use a good term. And I never felt uh, more confident than with until I met my surgeon and I had a uh, medical team that was dealing with a surgical team, right? This is my team. They're qualified people who can advocate for me, do the work, do all these things because they have been prepared and they have been formed and instructed as we have talked about through the last several weeks to be able to carry out this task. And so that is no difference in our faith, right? We have our faith. We, uh, some of us grew up in the church. It's the most natural thing. It's like we were born uh, very healthy and there's an aspect where we might be able to take some of that uh, for granted. Our, perhaps our upbringing, perhaps our parents, perhaps uh, you know schools we went to, if we were able to go to a private school and such, those are all things that are a part of our faith that form us in various ways that we can take for granted until something goes wrong, right? And something breaks down and then we realize, oh, uh, we need to uh, fix this. We need a team, we need an advocate to deal with this because in and of ourselves, we can't do it. We're, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the ability, we don't have um, the, the know-how to deal, but as we see in Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, that it doesn't just come to an individual, but it comes to a community, a significant group of people, of all kinds of people, all kinds that come from all kinds of places, right? And that becomes the advocates for the world, right? The, those who are uh, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit are sent to advocate for the world. On behalf of Jesus Christ. And so the Feast of Pentecost that we learned is, a, is actually a Jewish celebration. It's called the Festival of Weeks. It's a harvest festival. It's celebrated seven weeks and one day after the first day of Passover. And it also marks the giving of the Torah. 
This is also called a harvest festival. So if you think about like Halloween, we change the name to Halloween to the harvest festival. That's kind of what, what's going on in the festival of weeds. And it, it is also called the first fruits of the weed harvest where people bring their first fruits. And what we see in, in the Acts passage is that people were coming to Jerusalem to worship. In our gospel lesson, though, we see that Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. He promises comfort, a helper, an advocate who is for us. And Jesus spends his last evening with his own friends, right? You remember uh, we've talked about where Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. And Jesus spent his last evening with his friends, with his own. He eats with them. Remember, he washes their feet. And he gives them this new commandment that we have talked about over the last several weeks of Easter is to love one another, right? to love one another. And he talks with them about his relationship with the Father and the Spirit. He promises them another advocate. He says that I'm leaving, but it is to your advantage that I'm leaving because another an advocate will come. Uh, his followers will be staying, but Jesus will be leaving. And the Holy Spirit will be with them so that they may continue his work. And as we see, this advocate is a helper, a comforter, or some of the words it's translated to. But if you think of a legal sense, right? If you turn on the radio, and I was talking about this in the Bible study, like if I listen to sports radio, I'll get a lot of advocates for uh, divorce lawyers, right? I'll say, have an advocate. You're a male. You need an advocate. If I listen to the rock radio I listen to, they'll talk about, you need an advocate if you got a DUI or if you got in a car crash, <laughs> right? But there's always, you can tell what I listen to probably where I'm headed, right? So the, uh, you know, but those are the advocates when we're desperate, we wind up in a situation like, what do we do? We need an advocate, right? So in a legal sense, the advocate is the one who speaks before rulers on behalf of the accused. But what we see is that the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, come to uh, those who are completely faithful, courageous people, already loving one another and following Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes in the midst of confusion and fear and uncertainty, and then after an experience of great trauma and disappointment, and then there's the joy of Jesus being risen from the dead, but we'll remember as we've gone through the Easter, we're kind of left with the now and not yet of, we understand that Jesus has been raised from the dead, but we are not empowered to carry that out and share that message, this new message that, uh, that this gospel is expanding and ever expanding, right? Because what we see in Acts, here in that Pentecost is, is a great multitude, not just people that are gathered, but a multitude of people from all over the place, right? They're, they're from uh, Crete. You think of Cretans. My sister-in-law is a Cretan, right? She's a Crete. She's from Crete. And uh, I remember talking with my brother and her got married to the um, priest that married them, the Greek Orthodox priest. And we were talking about churches and stuff and talking about the family. And it's like, Paul started the church. I'm Greek, right? We talk about who started this church. Well, it left from Redeemer and came here, you know, and uh, somebody started Redeemer there. Somebody started, brought the Lutheran church to America. But there, the church starts with the apostles, right? And, and those are the type of people we're gathered. There's, a, a, you know, people that we saw over the time of Easter, like the Centurion and the Ethiopian eunuch, right? These are very different, vastly different people, and I, I can't def, overemphasize this enough. If you think of a centurion, and you think of an Ethiopian eunuch, and if you were to meet them at a bar, they'd be very different people. They have very significant positions, but they would approach them in very different ways. They would have probably different uh, attitudes to how they live. They'd have, probably have different uh, methods that they use and different uh, means in which they relate with people. But as we saw, the number one thing that they uh, desired was the same, and that was to be close with God. And they were brought in, I remember both of them, right? The Ethiopian says, hey, what's to keep me from being baptized? And then when Peter spoke out to the centurion, remember he says, what's to keep these people who have been blessed with the Holy Spirit, who are Gentiles, not even, in, you know, this is different than what we see in Pentecost, because they're not God. Or these God fear, but they're not proselytes. 
but, the, but they are filled with the Holy Spirit. So Peter says, what is to keep them from being baptized? And that is what we see in this greater picture of Pentecost. Where it's not just these people from these different places, but it is different kind of people with different makeups, different perspective, different thoughts, different ways that they're brought together into one body, right? And as Paul fleshes out, there's a purpose for that because ears and eyes can't do the same jobs. Uh, an Ethiopian eunuch and a Roman centurion do not do the same work, but they both work for the Lord, and both of their work is as important as the others. Right? And what we see in us, uh, Acts is that the Spirit the Holy Spirit is a spirit of prophecy. And prophecy here isn't in predicting the future, but it is in truth-telling. It is in speaking the word of God. It is in naming the places and the ways where God intervenes and initiates in the world. And it is a component of proclaiming the word of God and identifying God's work of salvation to the world. And what we see in our Ezekiel passage is that this touches the Holy Spirit. It doesn't just change us personally to be uh, to have a comforter and a helper and an advocate. It doesn't just uh, change us as a corporate uh, worshipers of God to be empowered to carry out this message to various groups of people throughout the world, but it also speaks to all of creation, the decay of all of creation, right? Um, if you remember, Ash Wednesday, we do it every year when we begin Lent. You come up and I take Ash and I put it on your head and I say, uh, you are reminded that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And throughout Lent, we're reminded with that burden of, uh, of, of the uh, mortality that we have and the fear of non existence, right? The, the uh, dread of uh, that sort of understanding of we're all headed towards death. It doesn't matter. Uh, some of us are much sicker than others, perhaps. I remember I was talking to Fred um, Schubert not too long ago, a couple of weeks, you know, with you there, and he said, you know, Fred, you're probably closer to death than most of us, and perhaps me, but I might drive home and die in a car crash, and that might not be the case. But, it, but the problem is, is we all kind of pretend that we're not on that same road. And when one of us gets close, we start to uh, get nervous, we start to get anxious, we start to wonder, you know, what's gonna happen? And God asks the question, can these bones live? Can these, this decayed body that we are in live? Can this decayed world that is fighting and that stuff is having contention after contention and war and sickness. Can this place live? And God says, yes. Prophesy. Right? Prophesy and give it the breath of God and tell the breath, tell the wind. Prophesy to the wind to come and fill us, to bring life so that we know God. And then we are sent. We are brought to life in this picture like in Ezekiel. And we are put together with, as um, individuals, as the church, but also that all of creation is being recreated in how God intended it to be. And we are a part of this work as we advocate, intercede, and share God's love and grace and mercy with those we encounter. Uh, we tell the world about the truth of God that leads to eternal life. We testify to the spirit of truth. truth. We know the Lord will act and guide us into all truth. And we see that the restoration of God's people and God's creation is promised and is carried out through the Holy Spirit, filled people of God. And this new gift of uh, tongues and fire turns us and the disciples outward to those outside their movement. And the church birth at Pentecost carries this deep in its DNA to make a home in God's life and invite others in a way they can understand to make a home in this community, in God's community of the Holy Spirit 
with one another together in unity. Let us consider that. Um, Exploitation, 
for those who are incarcerated, for all who suffer in any way, God of grace. Hear the God of grace. We pray for those who are experiencing health issues that compromise their lives and bring concern and care from their family members. We pray for answers that come to them through the medical people that, that advocate for their well-being as they journey through that perilous time that they may find themselves in. We especially remember those we name aloud or in our hearts. We remember and pray for Fred. We pray for Bill. We pray for Patty. We pray for Shirley and Rob. And we pray for others whom we name aloud now in this gathering assembly. God of grace. Here I am. We remember the faithful departed. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us in your faith. At the last day, breathe new life into our dry bones that we might feast forever with all the saints in light. God of grace. You are God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace of the Lord. Peace. <laughs> Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should in all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Filling the promises of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with the angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Beside the sinner, among the poor, and with us now. We thank, thank you, O God. God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me remembering his love for us on the way at the table and to the end we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come again we pray pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal and among your people throughout the world blessing praise and thanks to you holy god through jesus christ by your spirit in your church without end amen, amen. We gathered into one by the holy spirit let us pray as jesus taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is here where we come and we receive the food of faith, the Holy Spirit given to us and imparted to us the grace of God through this meal, through the broken body, shed blood, the bread and wine of Jesus' meal for us. All are welcome to this table. All who would come and receive this meal are welcome to be a part of this. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Come.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may now proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of love grant you the desire to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the God of transformative grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. fundraiser. I don't know if there's tickets left or not. Um, you might be able to get a hold of some scout ones. I got one if you want to <laughs> drive it up. Well, you know, I can maybe, I can maybe have one. So uh, look around if you're, you're not, if you haven't uh, found one yet, we could probably find you one if, if we need you or we'll sneak you in. So keep that in mind. Uh, we have our tech study on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. So join that if you haven't yet. Uh, you might like it. You never know. We have good conversations, and if you want to influence the sermon, that's the way to do it. <laughs> uh, come to that, bring your A game, and, and, and let me have it. And they'll make it into the sermon, I promise. With that being said, let us finish with our blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.